Section twenty seven of Wessex Poems by Thomas Hardy. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Libby Gone. My Sicily, seventeen hundred something. Alive, and I leapt in my wonder, was faint of my joyance, and grasses and groves shone in garments of glory to me. She lives in a plenteous well being, to day as aforehand. The dead bore the name, though a rare one, the name that bore she. She lived. I, afar in the city of frenzy-led factions, had squandered green years and maturer in bowing the knee, to balls elusive and specious, till chance had there voiced me that one I loved vainly in nonage had ceased her to be. The passion the planets had scowled on, and change had let dwindle, her death rumour smartly we lifted to full apogee. I mounted a steed in the dawning, with acheful remembrance, and made for the west highway to far Exonbury. Passing heaths and the house of long sieging, I neared the thin steeple that tops the fair fane of Poor's olden Episcopal sea. And changing anew my on-bearer, I traversed the downland, whereon bleak hill-graves of chieftains bulge barren of tree. And still sadly onward I followed that highway of the Ison, which trails its pale ribbon down Wessex, or Lynchet and Lee. Although the stour-bordered forum, where legions had wayfared, and where the slow river upglasses its green canopy, and by Weatherbury Castle, and thence from through Casterbridge held I still on, to entomb her my vision saw stretched pallidly. No highwayman's trot blew the night wind to me so life-weary, but only the creak of the gibbets or wagoner's gee. Triple ramparted Maiden gloomed greyly above me from southward, and north the hill fortress of Egar and square Pummery. The nine-pillared Cromlech, the bride streams, the axe, and the otter, I passed to the gate of the city where X scents the sea. Till spent in a grave acre pausing, I learned twas not my love to whom Mother Church had just murmured a last lullaby. Then where dwells the canon's kinswoman, my friend of aforetime? Twas hard to repress my heart heavings and new ecstasy. She wedded, ah! wedded beneath her she keeps a stage hostel ten miles hence beside the great highway the famed lions three her spouse was her lackey no option twixt wedlock and worse things a lapse over sad for a lady of her pedigree i shuddered said nothing and wandered to shades of green laurel too ghastly had grown those first tidings so brightsome of blee for on my ride hither I'd halted a while at the lions, and her, her whose name had once opened my heart as a key, I looked on unknowing, and witnessed her jests with the tapsters, her liquor-fired face, her thick accents in naming her fee. O oh God, why this seeming derision, I cried in my anguish, O oh, once loved, O oh, fair unforgotten, that thing, I meant it thee. Inured and at peace, lost but sainted, were grief I could compass. Depraved, tis for Christ's poor dependent a cruel decree. I backed on the highway, but passed not the hostel. Within there too mocking to love's re-expression was time's repartee. Up tracking where legions had wayfared, by Cromlech's unstoried, and Lynchet's and sepultured chieftains in self-colloquy. A feeling stirred in me, and strengthened that she was not my love, but she of Garth, who lay wrapped in her long reverie. And thence, till to-day, I persuade me that this was the true one, that death stole intact her young dearness and innocency. Frail-witted, eluded, they call me, I may be. Tis better to dream than to own the debasement of sweet Sicily. Moreover, I rate it unseemly to hold that kind heaven could work such device to her ruin and my misery. 
So lest I disturb my choice vision, I shun the west highway, even now when the naps ring with rhythms from blackbird and bee, and feel that with slumber half-conscious she rests in the church hay, her spirit unsoiled as in youth time when lovers were we. End of section 27